Hi, my name is Rick Bloodworth. This is the Common Sense Christian Channel, and today is Friday, so we're going to talk about financial matters again. And today, specifically, we're going to be looking at budgets and how to set up a budget, and also some of the, the reasoning behind needing a budget, uh, also how it will help you. A lot of people, when they look at a budget, they immediately just kind of turn their nose up at it. I love the example given uh, by, by George Clayson in his book, The Richest Man in Babylon. And he has uh, a, a, an example within that where they're talking about budgeting. And one man just kind of uh, says, I'm a free man. I'm not going to be held enslaved to a budget. Well, the guy who was teaching the class on budgeting, who happened to be very wealthy, by the way, said, well, who's going to set your budget? And the man said, I would. And he said, so, so uh, if you were a, a pack mule and you were deciding on what you were going to carry, wouldn't you be very careful as to what you were going to be putting on your back as far as loading yourself down for a long trip? And the guy said, well, yeah. And he says the same thing with budgeting. You figure out what you need and you put that within your budget, and then you're going to be able to manage your finances so much better. It's not going to be something that enslaves you. It's actually going to be something that frees you. And so if you've had the idea or the notion somehow, somewhere along the lines that a budget is just uh, going to take away your freedom, uh, understand that, that in the long run, a budget's going to give you more freedom than you could ever imagine because a budget's going to allow you to get your expenses under control to the point where you can actually save for some things that you've always dreamed about having. Uh, but if you don't have any control, if you don't have any self-control with your finances, eventually that's going to make you feel enslaved much more than any budget will do that. And a budget is simply a picture of, of what you have and what you need to buy. So it's going to show you what your income is, which is fairly uh, quickly uh, calculated, but it's also going to show you what your normal reasonable expenses are to where you can figure out if you can afford the type of lifestyle that you desire right now. And if you can't, it'll help you to have a little bit of incentive to get your finances under control so that you can afford your desired life lifestyle in the future. So in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 23, King Solomon says this, Be sure to know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds. Well, if you're like me, you have no flocks and no herds, but that was their wealth. That was their business. That was their source of income. And so Solomon is just telling them that they need to know the, the state of their finances. And he goes on to say this, For riches do not endure forever. One thing for sure, if you don't keep careful attention upon your finances, at some point you're going to be poor, unless you're really fortunate and, and, and receive some kind of an inheritance or win the lottery or whatever uh, you think is going to bail you out of your financial mess. It's a lot easier just to have a little discipline now so that you don't have to worry about things later on. Uh, another proverb Solomon has, he talks about the, the fact that they are for attaining wisdom, for understanding, and then he says for acquiring a disciplined and a prudent life. A lot of times when we think about discipline, we only think of the punitive side of discipline, but that's just one area of it. If we discipline ourselves by getting up in the morning, by going to work, by doing, uh, by doing a, a fair job, by making sure that we're taking care of our families and that we're giving them proper attention. And if we discipline ourselves in the way that we use our finances, then we're not going to have the punitive side quite so often. But if you don't discipline yourself on the budgeting side of finances, eventually somebody is going to discipline you. And, and just think of it this way. I think everybody has seen that, that unruly child that grows up into an unruly uh, teenager. The parents just don't want to discipline that child, or at least they're not, they're not consistent enough to keep up with the discipline. Well, if you don't discipline your ch children, if you as a child and a teenager don't get the proper discipline uh, from your parents, and if you never acquire the proper discipline on yourself, eventually society is going to discipline you, and that's going to be the punitive, punitive side of discipline uh, to, where, to where you may end up in prison because you just don't want anybody 
telling you what to do until you're forced uh, to allow people to tell you what to do. Well, it's hard enough in legal matters. It's also very difficult in matters financial. And so if we can get our finances under control, I believe we're going to find that this type of discipline pays huge dividends over time. And it's also going to give you a peace of mind right now. And so let's go ahead and look at just some of the very basics of setting a budget. And it's going to begin uh, with, with figuring out how much money you have coming in. And so let's start with all, with all sources of income. And we're talking about our take-home pay, so we're talking about after taxes. We're talking about after anything else has been deducted from your paycheck. You may have uh, a medical plan where they take part of your paycheck out before they even give it to you. Uh, you may have an investment plan where, again, they take a portion of your paycheck out before they give it to you. And so when we talk about income to start our budget, we're talking about all of our sources of income, but it's at our take-home pay. It's after taxes. Uh, other sources of income might include uh, a second job. They call it a side hustle now. Maybe you uh, deliver pizzas or, or um, uh, take in uh, sewing or something like that. There's all sorts of side hustles that people do. Maybe you're an Uber driver uh, in your off hours. But include all sources of your income in this budget and you're going to know what you have to work with. Uh, the next uh, part is to figure out uh, what you have now that you need to spend. I would always start with, with your contribution. If you're not a Christian and you don't give uh, to, to, uh, to the church or to anybody else, then obviously this is not going to be something on, on your list. I've got a very modest uh, giving of $200 a month, and uh, for this type of an income, that's only 5% of the income. You'll adjust it to where you think it needs to be uh, for you, and, and that's between you and God as far as, you, as, far as how you do that. Uh, and the other thing I would take out is savings, and, and we've talked about this in previous videos, this idea that the first 10% of your income is yours to keep. After you've given your contribution, you, you have 10% left over, and that 10% is for things like an emergency fund, just kind of stacking up some cash because you are going to have emergencies. Uh, building a better pantry. Uh, putting in items that you know you're going to use, preferably uh, non-perishable items or at least items that have a very uh, long expiration date. Things like canned goods and, and beans and rice and things like that when we're talking about food. Um, also, uh, things like uh, um, just uh, go, in, go into, the, into your bathroom and see the things you normally use on a daily basis, things from uh, your, your uh, razors to your deodorant to your soap and on and on and on, uh, paper towels in the kitchen, uh, different things uh, that you might need for, for your just basic auto upkeep. And, and you can put those types of things in a, in a pantry with part of this 10%, and that'll give you a savings that cannot be uh, taken away from you. You will only consume it when you need it. And then the third type of savings uh, within this 10% is going to be some kind of an investment. And, and you get to choose whatever investment is right for you. You might uh, want to get uh, a small mutual fund. You might be saving up uh, for a down payment for an income property. Uh, you might want to put a little silver or gold aside. That part's up to you. And so, again, uh, start off with, with your giving to God first and foremost, and then look at your savings with the idea of extra cash for an emergency, uh, things for your pantry that you know that you will use, and then some sort of an investment plan where you can at least start putting a little something ahead to where you can see that you actually have something that's growing for the future. Well, after this very simple um, uh, contribution and savings, now if you start off with a $4,000 income take home, Deducting that $600 from these two items, you're going to have $3,400 left over for your expenses. And that may seem like a lot to some, and it may not seem like uh, much at all to others, depending on your income and where, where you currently stand. But we're just going to start with this as a basic income. About $4,000 is going to be the average American's household uh, for take-home pay. If you have two income 
uh, winners, it might be considerably uh, higher. You might have a very good job that pays you uh, a very good salary, and so it'll be higher. Uh, but on average, that's probably not too far off. You might have about $3,400 for expenses. And so in setting up your budget, now you're going to look at everything that you have to spend. You're going to start with your housing because you've got to live somewhere. This is going to include a rent or a mortgage payment. Uh, if you have homeowners association dues, that's going to include that. Uh, in your mortgage, that's going to include your real estate taxes and your real estate insurance. And so all that will be included in that. And I'm sure you would agree that $1,000 if you have a mortgage is extremely modest. You're not going to have much of a home at that point. And even in some areas, a thousand dollars is not going to rent you a very nice place. Maybe a, a one or a two bedroom apartment at the best. But whatever it is you're going to have as far as your housing for the payment, put that down. I'm just going to use a fee, a modest fee of a thousand dollars. That may not be realistic for you, so you're going to need to adjust your budget. Uh, for utilities, that's going to include uh, your gas, your, your electric, your water. About $400 a month isn't too far off the average. And so you're looking at housing of about $1,400 between your mortgage and your utilities or your rent and your utilities. And, and so that's going to help you if you're making this type of an income to figure out about what you can afford for a house. And, it, and that's also going to help you see whether or not you really need to be thinking about purchasing this house or signing this lease for this really nice apartment or even a lease for a home. Anyway, the next thing you're going to have to have is groceries. $600 a month is pretty low. That's not going to allow for a lot of eating out, um, but it is going to allow you to eat. So about $600 for that. Uh, we have a lot of electronics now, don't we? Everything from phones to, to our television sets to our computers. And so uh, this next uh, category is going to be for that. Your, your, your cell phone, uh, your cable, your internet. You may still have a landline. All that's going to go into that. About $200 is going to be fairly reasonable unless you really go overboard. And if you're prudent, if you're frugal, you can, you can get by on much less. Now, this next category is going to vary all over the place for different people. Uh, but I just want to look at a reasonable car with reasonable insurance and, and not traveling thousands and thousands of miles uh, a month to where you have to spend a lot more on gas. If you do that, if you have a sales job or something that requires you to travel a lot, then you're going to have to adjust the budget for that. But about $500 for the car payment, for your gas, um, and, and for any repairs that you might have is not too unreasonable. If you're like me, that's a little bit high. That's probably the first budget item we've come across that's actually a little high for some of us as far as as far as our lifestyle. And then you're going to need about $100 for insurance for your automobiles. It's going to be a lot more than that if you have new car payments because they're going to make you get comprehensive and that will, will raise your insurance markedly. But again, just for your transportation, about $600 a month, $500 for the payment and gas and another $100 for insurance. And then you're going to have to look at any loans that you have. You may have gotten some consumer loans, buying some appliances uh, or buying some furniture. Uh, you may have student loans that you're still paying on. You may have credit card loans, and we're just going to be looking at the minimum payment on that. If you have a credit card balance, we're just looking at the minimum payment uh, for this. But all your loans together after your mortgage and after your car payment we're going to be looking at about $400 a month for the purpose of this example. Uh, and then everything else, your, your miscellaneous items. This is going to include everything uh, from eating out to, uh, to uh, taking care of your pet uh, to, uh, to an emergency dentist uh, visit. All these things, you might, you might, since you've got internet, you might like to shop online. That's going to include your online purchases. $200 a month isn't much for miscellaneous or to spend for everything else after this very basic um, budget uh, for a $4,000 income. 
but your total expenses are going to be $3,400. And so that's what you've got after your contribution and savings is $3,400 to spend. And your expenses on your budget are $3,400. Now, let me point out some very obvious expenses that you may have to include. You may not get health insurance with your employer. Well, health insurance just for, for a, a, a man and a woman in good health that's going to be that's going to be um, that's going to cover anything is going to cost you a minimum of five hundred dollars a month. If you have a family, it's going to go up from there. If you're in bad health, it's going to go up from there. Uh, my wife and I, since we're Christians, uh, we we use the Christian Healthcare Ministry, and for about I think five hundred and forty-four dollars a month uh, for our insurance premium we are able to get full insurance with no deductible. Oh, I think a thousand dollar deductible is what that has. And then they pay for prescriptions and things like that. If you're interested in something like that, just go to the Christian Healthcare Ministry website uh, and you can get the information a little bit more accurately probably than I've given to you. Uh, there are other expenses. If you have two, uh, if the husband and the wife are both working and you have children, you're very likely going to have uh, some expenses for child care. Unless you're very fortunate and you have a parent that's going to be watching these children for you for free, you're going to have a fairly significant monthly item uh, just for, for uh, child care. Uh, if you've gotten your personal life into a mess and you have things like alimony or you're paying child care payments, uh, that's going to also boost it. If you are an animal lover and you just uh, um, really take care of your dogs or cats or, or hippopotamuses or whatever you got, um, then you're going to have to add another uh, item onto that. Uh, there are also going to be things, even if you don't have a mortgage, you're still going to have to pay real estate taxes every year and probably real estate insurance unless you're just planning on not having that. And so you'll need to, even though that's a one time a year uh, item, it's a really big item and you need to be saving for that on a monthly basis. Same thing for your car registration. Car registration in a lot of areas isn't bad, but in some areas it's pretty significant. And so you may be needing to save a monthly amount just to pay your annual car registrations. Well, the list of things that we could add to this go on and on and on. But, but I want to make a really important point here. Once you know what your income is, if you're going to have happiness in life, you are going to then figure out a budget that allows you to live on your income or you're going to have to do something else that will get your income up. Um, one of the problems with getting in over your head young in life is sometimes a couple will get married and, and both of them want a new car and they, they go out and they get a new house and they put new furniture in that house and everything is new and everything is exciting um, and they both have good jobs so there's no real problem. They don't worry about budgeting because, well, why do they need a budget for? They've got enough money left over at the end of the month to pay their bills so, so they're in good shape. And then a child uh, comes along or one of the, the, the two spouses gets laid off and cannot replace their income even if they can get another job and so there's a lot of things that happen and, and so if, if you and I can figure out how to live on a reasonable budget uh, keeping in mind that we're going to be the ones that are going to set that budget nobody's setting it for us but you are going to have to live you are going to have to have a house you're going to have to have transportation of some kind you're going to have to have food uh, clothing is another big item for some people. They just have to have lots of new clothing. Well, in a budget like this, when, when $200 a month is going to have to cover every extra thing, it's not going to leave a lot of extra money for things like that. And so hopefully you can see that, that uh, obviously you've already seen or you probably wouldn't be tuning in today, that, that life is just expensive. But if you and I can figure out the condition of our herds, so to speak, and we can recognize what we have realistically coming in and what we realistically have going out, then we can set a budget with all the budget items that we want, and, and then we can 
uh, then we can live the lifestyle uh, that is most prudent for our income. You may be single, uh, you may be really happy to share an apartment with two or three other people and, and have a little extra money left over for traveling and all the things that you do when you're single. That's fine. You get to, you get to determine that. But again, unless you keep within the confines of your budget according to, to the income that you have, there's going to come a point where there will be a day of reckoning. Uh, the credit card is going to run out, and yet the bill is not. You're going to be paying so much on interest just on what you've run up that you may have dug a hole that, that's very difficult to get out of. Now you may have to have a second job or even a third job just to get things under control. It's a lot easier to get things under control at the beginning, uh, but whether you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out a reasonable budget for you or for you and your spouse, or you and your spouse and your kids, or if you're, you're fairly well established but you're seeing that you're starting to get into trouble or that you're in serious trouble, no matter what situation you find in life, you're going to have to have a budget. Even if you are independently wealthy, you really need to have a budget because at some point, if you don't have a budget and your spending gets out of hand, you're not going to be independently wealthy uh, for too long. And so get a budget. Uh, it's not enslaving. It's freeing. Uh, it's very, it's very uh, I believe, comforting. And it gives you a great peace of mind to know uh, that you have enough money coming in to handle the expenses that you do have. But it's also important for us to know when we have more expenses than we have money coming in, that that's the situation. And then we step back and we figure out what we're going to do. Maybe we cut out some of the unnecessary expenses. Maybe we don't buy as expensive of groceries. Maybe when our really nice apartment lease runs out, we get a more modest uh, apartment. Um, maybe next time we, we get our automobile paid off, we just get an, a, a reasonable used car that we can pay cash for. The repairs will be a whole lot less per month than your, than your average monthly payment on a new car. But all these things you get to figure out, but my encouragement to you is figure it out. Get you a budget. Get you a ledger book, something like this. I like the six-column ledger book, even when I don't use all the... The columns, I can, I can start off with what I've got uh, for the different accounts. I've got a master ledger where I show my income and my expenses, and then I transfer those expenses to their own accounts. And so I'll have an account on another page, uh, perhaps for housing expenses, and another one for automobile expenses and such. And it lets me know where I'm at each month to where if I've spent all the money I had budgeted for that amount that I'm going to have to either get money from another account, or I'm going to have to just not spend as much if that's possible. Uh, there's a couple of other things that I think is really important. When it comes to our lives here on earth, we're just here for a while. God has designed us with a physical body that wears out, but with a soul that's eternal, and that soul is going to live somewhere. He wants us to live with Him. But part of the test of life is in proving that we're good stewards. In Luke chapter 16, Jesus uh, gave a parable. He said there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be my manager anymore. Well, in the big picture of things, the only thing we're doing here on earth is using God's resources. And I believe he wants us to enjoy that. I don't, I don't think we would have so much physical beauty in this world, uh, so much variety in the flavors of food and the colors and all the wonderful things that God has given to us just, just really testify to the point that he wants us to enjoy our life. But everything we have is in stewardship to him. We're still servants of God. And so whatever we have coming in, we need to remember that's really His, and we need to use it as responsibly as we can. In that same parable, when, when Jesus is wrapping it up, He says this in Luke 16, verse 10, Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. 
If you haven't been trustworthy in handling worthy wealth, who will trust you with real riches? Part of the test of life is, in fact, the way we handle the riches that we have, the money that comes our way. Are we using it for the reasonable things of life, or are we just selfishly spending it on any uh, whim or desire that we might have? Are we using it for sinful activities? Or are we using it to God's glory? These are the types of things that will follow us into judgment when we give an account for what we've done. If we've been faithful by the grace of God, we get to be with Him forever. But if we can't be faithful with something as small as money, then we may not really um, be all that serious about serving God in the first place. And it should be a wake-up call for us to get serious. Um, in verse 12, he says, If you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? I don't know what it's going to be like in heaven, but I know it's going to be good. And I'm looking forward to finding out what all these things mean. But Jesus closes this off with one of the most famous passages, I suppose, in all of Scripture. He says, No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. One of the things that a budget will allow you to do is to use money as a tool in service to God. But if you don't get a, if you don't get a budget and you get in over your head, you're going to find yourself just drowning with the financial problems in life to the point where maybe you're not going to be as good of a servant as God expects you to be, or as you expect yourself to be. Anyway, that is the lesson for today. I hope this helps. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section. I always try and get back uh, on the comments, especially if there's questions as soon as possible. Uh, but if this helped, uh, just like the video. If, if you think there's somebody else that it might help in your life, just share it with them. And hopefully it'll give them some ideas that maybe they really haven't thought of before. And maybe it'll give them some tools to get their finances under control. Well, that's enough for today. I appreciate your tuning in, and I truly pray that God will bless you richly as you do your best to serve Him in all that you do.